On today's show, the Dallas Mavericks almost make Slightly and I pull all of our beautiful hair out. We'll talk about how it went down, how the Mavericks got bailed out, and more. Oh my God, today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Locked On Mavericks. Now Locked On Mavericks. don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Angstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day where we uh, let it ride. It feels dirty. It feels dirty to let it ride. <laughs> I'm just still processing what just transpired. A dub is a dub. Thanks for being part of the show. Make it like that maps your first listen today where the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day and to comment anything below. Let me know in the comment section. I want to know if you feel more good about the win or if you feel more bad about how we got to this point with the win. Because I could go either way with this one. Let us know in the comment section. And joining me, the post-game prodigy, which you got for me slightly biased. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I'm thankful for this Mavericks team because, man, <laughs> they just make me feel good all the time. I'm thankful for uh, back contusions instead of leg injuries. I'm thankful yeah. for Kyrie and his uh, – I only hit threes during the clutch. I, I'm thankful for uh, LeBron for uh, – I'm thankful for Grant Williams for almost hurting LeBron and then <laughs> making him <laughs> – I'm thankful for Anthony Davis for – uh, not being as good of a basketball player as we all thought he was going to be in his career. Yeah, that was rough. Uh, I'm thankful. For, I'm thankful for all. Of that. I'm thankful for all of it. I'm thankful for uh, Kyrie. Uh, enjoy your Thanksgiving today. We appreciate yeah. all of you for hanging out with us. Glad that it's Thanksgiving, man. We'll get into this Mavs game. Uh, Jason Kidd listens to Lockdown Mavs confirmed. Really? Yesterday. Uh, two days ago, I got on the show and said, it's time to play Rashawn Holmes. Yeah. The Dwight thing is it's done. It's time to play Rashawn Holmes. We'll talk about him a little later. We'll talk about Josh Green, the weird tale of two halves that he had, basically. It's very weird. Talk about Kyrie and Luka. But let's start here. I was ready slightly. Not slightly. I was fully ready. But <laughs> slightly is his name. I was fully ready to get on this show and to just go off on Luka. And go off on Jason Kidd for that fourth quarter. Mavericks up by 20 points. 91 to 71 going into that fourth quarter. Luca, Tim Hardaway, Hardy, Josh Green, and Dwight Powell step on the court. And the Mavericks then slowly but surely miss 12, 11 shots to start the quarter. Jeez. They don't score a field goal. They only score two points. They don't, they don't score a field goal until... The four minute and 17 second mark in the fourth quarter. This team that is the second best offense in the league that has a top five player that considers himself a, a best player that many of you that you probably consider the best player in the NBA to go that long in the fourth quarter and to not and to not score. I was ready to go in on this team and I was ready to go in on Jason Kidd and slightly it sounded like you were too. I uh, this doesn't I, I'm I'm pretty much I think I'm out now. I've defended Kidd. But after rewatching some of these games, defensively, I tweeted about this a couple days ago. They're like it's a personnel problem defensively for them, and they were good tonight defensively. But I'm just saying in the grand scheme of things, uh, it's a personnel problem. But their effort is really bad. They don't communicate. They don't like. It feels like half the time these guys don't know what they're doing defensively. That falls on coaching at the end of the day. So I was like, okay, maybe it just takes some time to gel. That fourth quarter, I mean, that would have. I don't know where you would rank where where you would have ranked that in the worst losses in at least like recent franchise history because last year had a bunch of terrible ones but this one would have been right up at the top of the let's, list. Let's say well it's it's not worse than the thirty point Raptors loss that one year. Remember yeah remember that, that was, year, remember that year yes Matt that was terrible blew that thirty point win or thirty point game. Let's say Kyrie doesn't make this three to end the game here. That's a thirty to ten quarter to end after you were up by twenty. Yeah, like, I mean. Like, <laughs> Literally. You can even go a little bit further than that and say, well, if Kyrie doesn't hit that three, then he doesn't hit the two free throws. I see yeah, right. he doesn't have to get fouled. So, oh my God. And I mean, my thing is, is how do you blow a 20-point lead in Sorry. one quarter and your timeout comes, your first timeout comes with two minutes left in the quarter? You don't use your use it or lose it timeout. You don't use any timeouts during any of this run. You just let it play out. And I mean, Nick, they were losing by a point. Like, 
They were down with how many seconds left? 50 seconds left. They were losing. How about even they cut it to six with like six and a half minutes left. And you think, all right, let's, let's slow down here. And this has been my thing with Jason Kidd for now two years fully with Jason Kidd. The reason why this exists. I'm not playing. I'm watching just like you guys. Is because I asked him after a post game one time, said, what's your thought process between like calling a timeout to stop a run and letting them run through it and like in stopping the game in some way. And he just said, I'm not playing. I'm watching just like you guys. Basically saying he doesn't affect the game, which makes me then think, okay, well, you're not like a soccer coach. You're not Ted Lasso out there that just like throws the players out there, maybe call some set pieces here and there and calls it a day. Like this is basketball. Coaches actually have an impact on the game. You can change things. You can, I think you can motivate players. I think you can do all that. And Jason Kidd plays hands off. On all that. That was me swiping my hands together, yeah. like like washing my hands. I was not slapping. Well, <laughs> I, my thing, too, but, at the timeouts, in a game like this, okay, you haven't scored all quarter. You haven't made a field goal <laughs> until the four-minute mark. Okay? Take a timeout. There's actually some crazy stats out there. The Mavericks are, like, top three in uh, ATOs, out, out of timeout court. plays, like, in points per possession. Hey, we need to stop the bleeding. We need points. We need to see the ball go through the hoop because we're just missing shots. They started the quarter. They were just missing shots, and it is what it is. Then as the quarter progressed, it was Lucas dribbling the basketball for 22 seconds, and we are taking the worst shot you'll ever see. Call a timeout. Drop a play. See the ball go through the hoop. Okay, we stopped the bleeding. We have a point. Right. Let's let's just play defense to get out of here with the W. The second I have a back-to-back for the Lakers. They're yeah. up 20 in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Put them they- away. And they look tired. I wrote down at four minutes and 40 seconds left in the third. I wrote down Lakers look tired now. That's when the Mavericks went up 20. Yeah. And then Dallas, for, like Lakers called a timeout because they were, you know, the run was really going for the, the Mavs there. The Mavs coming at a timeout forced a shot clock violation. I was like, oh, this game's over. Yeah. Like they're down 20. The Mavs just forced a shot clock violation. Everything's going for the Mavericks. Lively, Lively's out at this point. We'll talk about him, obviously, a little bit later. And then I was like, okay, well, that game's done. And then to start the start the fourth quarter, you just get like beat down and beat down and chipped away and chipped away and chipped away. And let's Luca doesn't get to scapegoat any of this either. He was awful in that fourth quarter. One of seven from the field, missed all three threes, got to the free throw line, hit four threes. So at least he scored how many? What percentage of the points is that? Uh, yeah, he scored. he scored 31% of all their points in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Had had an assist for the Kyrie three that he hit. And it wasn't like he was turning the ball over either. He wasn't like making terrible passing decisions. He wasn't like trying weird stuff. He just was making bad shot decisions. Yeah. And and it was it was awful offense. And he doesn't get to escape that. If the Mavericks lose this game, I, I would have put a lot of it on Luca. Oh, this would have been uh this would have been like the lead all social media apps. If you're like a, like a big time Luca yeah. defender after yeah, this game, cause it was that fourth quarter was horrible. The process was, it, it's shocking. Cause the first three quarters, it was very, it was incredible. Very good. Their offense was incredible. He was putting on a playmaking clinic. His passing was unbelievable setting up teammates. I mean, he could have easily walked away tonight with 15, 16, 17 assists. That's how great his passing was. But the fourth quarter, I don't know what happened. I mean, I, I'd have to go back and watch. I, I don't know if the Lakers just turned it up to a level well, that, is unmatched by anyone else in the league when they have it going. He just settled. He just settled for too too many shots. And that's the thing with Luca. I feel like at some some points, he just settles for stuff. He settles for threes. He settles for the step backs. He hasn't been doing that so much this year, which is why this was so so glaring for us. But he just he settles for that. And you can see he settles in his career sometimes. And you wonder, like, all right, when is the when is the not go when is he gonna kick into the next gear and not settle with his conditioning, not settle with his complaint of the reps? You know, he's like he Said at the beginning of the season, I'm trying. You know, I'm trying. Sometimes it just doesn't work. Well, you can't can't settle like that. You've got to get better at this. This is a non-negotiable. The Mavericks need him to get better at that in order for them to take another step. And you wonder about, you know, plays like this too, where he has the ball. It's it's him and only him, but it's kind of been designed around that because you're that good, right? Yeah. And this is why this is why I'm it seems like I'm so hard on Luca right now because he's that good. We want him to be that next level. Those guys, the LeBrons of the world, get that level of scrutiny. Yeah, they they get it. I mean, it, it it just happens. And like I tweeted out, or I sent out to the the subtexters before the game. I do like a preview. Uh, the Lakers are a plus nine net rating with LeBron's on the court and a minus seventeen when he's off the court. Jeez, like just, when you're LeBron James, when you're Luka Doncic, when you're the number one guy still at this point, you get the scrutiny still, and yeah. it still it still happens if if he's like that, man. I was so frustrated with him by the end by the end of that game, and then Kyrie came. We got to go positive now. And then Kyrie, yeah. and then Kyrie came in, hit that shot, 
And that's what he does, man. He's done it with LeBron James to win a title, and now he's done it with Luka Doncic to win a regular season game in November. <laughs> uh, this was the Mavericks title in a lot of ways. I, honestly, <laughs> if you blew that lead, I, I would say this might I had nothing to do with it. At the peak of my anger, I was like, I will not say a good word about this team for three months. <laughs> like, I will need three months of recovery from this game alone <laughs> well, before I'm like, hey, you know, they look pretty good. Well, we're in this moment right now. If you if you follow the Mavericks, if you cover the Mavericks, if you love the Mavericks, and if you're listening to this, you do. You're in this stage right now where I don't know if I can trust you, right? Like, you've broken my yeah. trust. Yeah. It felt like we had a really great relationship, and the team goes to the Western Conference Finals, and you're like, oh, my gosh. Did they just propose? They just proposed, and I didn't expect it. Like, they committed, <laughs> and it was like, oh, the relationship's going really well. They got a promotion at their job. Like, we're feeling really good in life. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, last year, felt like they cheated on you. You know, like, like maybe yeah. not, maybe not all the way, but like whatever level you consider cheating, like they did like just up, just up to there. Yeah. And yeah. you're like, dang. And now you got to figure out and feel out if you can trust them again. Can I trust you to win these games that you're supposed to? And so far they've won the games they're supposed to, and they've lost games that you thought maybe were contested Kings, Nuggets, Bucks. And then now you're like, okay, well, if they lose this game, when you felt like they should have won Lakers on a second out of a back to back up 20 points in the fourth quarter, that would have just broken your trust even more. And so now I don't know where to take now I don't know where to take this because do I trust them now more? Or are I just happy that you got out with a win? Like, all right, you went out with your friends, everything worked out, nothing weird happened, right? <laughs> like this is where we are with the relationship at this you point. You flirted with you you flirted with that guy who bought you the drink, but you turned you turned around right before it reached yeah, the yeah, bad yeah. part. You, you took the drink, you said thank you, you made, yeah, yeah, and then you walked away. I was like, okay. You gave him a fake number, we're good. But no, I will say, if you want to look at the positives, you could say, well, this was the best they've looked defensively all season. <laughs> coming so. up, coming up. Let's talk <laughs> about that. This is the best the Mavericks have looked defensively this season. There are some really good things to take away from this game. We've gone through all the garbage of the fourth quarter. Let's talk about what worked for the Mavs coming up. I need a recovery beer. Thanks for everybody hanging out with us on Lockdown Maps, being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad, listening every day. If you want those game updates and all kinds of stuff, I'll do a film breakdown, all kinds of things. Subscribe to the subtext. Click the link in the description or text the number as well. All right, slightly. Lots of good stuff in this game. I, I've, I've, I've gotten it out. I feel like I've gotten it out. All the negativity of the fourth quarter. Kyrie bailed him out. I feel, I feel good about it. Lots of really good stuff in this game. Yeah. Um, starting with Luca and Kyrie before before the fourth quarter. I mean, they were. I thought they were great. They were doing great stuff. They were they're creating stuff. Luca, like you said, could he had he finished with what eight assists? He could have had 12, 15, like you said. He had the pass that went right through LeBron's legs and crazy. My mentions right now are full of individual frames and slowed down <laughs> footage. I mean, we are we are we just passed so november 22nd was the 60th anniversary of jfk's assassination here in dallas where is this there's, going there's the there's the, <laughs> walk with me here walk. okay <laughs> there's the subruder film of all the like all right slow down where's it coming from and all the where's the shot coming from and all that there's yeah. dealey plaza here in dallas there's all the conspiracies maybe the most conspiratorized thing event in history yeah and now in in celebration of that in the anniversary, there's the Bruder <laughs> film of did the pass go through LeBron James' leg or not? My oh yeah, that was slightly. Did that it. was definitely a nut. Wait, do people not think that was a nutmeg? Go that was for go, sure. Go nutmeg. check it through all my mentions. Oh, there's these guys just going back and forth about did it go through LeBron James' leg or not? Oh, I thought that was clearly. I I didn't even realize that that was a debatable thing. There's I several. It was there's nutmeg. several angles where it seems oh, like oh, it did. So it. this really is this a Bruder film. I thought we were going full. I was like, oh, hey, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Ever, twice now, I've, I've got you to a place where you're like, I have no idea where he's going. <laughs> <laughs> Luca threw that pass back into the left. But the, their pace was great. I thought the the Holmes, like Luca stuff was great. Their chemistry was great. We tweeted yeah, the exact okay. same clip at a certain point where it just like Holmes set a screen for Luca. Then he goes into the paint and Dwight does this a lot, but Holmes did it perfectly yeah. where he sets like a, a, it's not a pin down, but it's like a pin up. The where he like, seal. Yeah, right. Yeah, the guitar scene where he 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 like he pins up a player in the paint so Luca can get around him, and when he turns the corner, he's got a wide open layup. Yeah, and he did that three times. Like that that chemistry was really good. Kyrie was aggressive early. Like we saw really good things at the beginning of this game. Josh Green was good tonight too. This was Josh Green's best game, and then he stopped playing for some reason. But uh, no, yeah, the Rashawn Holmes stuff was shocking. I mean, I got to eat some crow there. Admittedly, I, I just 
because his defense was pretty good too. This is a good matchup though for Holmes. I will say that yeah. the size thing, the Lakers don't, don't go small. Like that's just not something they do no. when 80s out it's wood. It's Jackson Hayes. They don't do like a small ball. We're going to space the floor and try to get, you know, get guys out in space type of thing. So this is a great matchup for him and shout out to kid for recognizing that and playing up. I mean, how many minutes did Rashawn Holmes get 23 and I don't yeah. know. Well, he had to play know, more because right, lively yeah. was out. Lively got hurt. So uh, the minutes would have been lower than that, but still, I mean, he was really good in those minutes. Like really impressive. First half, the Mavericks were pushing the pace too. They had 15 fast break points. Like they, they were doing, it felt like they were doing everything right in this game, which is what made that fourth quarter so frustrating is that they just yeah. took their foot off the gas in Shocking. this one. But uh, so Rashawn Holmes plays instead of Dwight Powell, basically he, he, they switched roles mm -hmm. and he was the first big off the bench. And yeah, like I thought he played, he, I thought he played really well, 10, 10 rebounds. But like you said, this is a good matchup for them because AD doesn't really kill you with the post-up stuff. So he can guard him in space and it's going to be okay. You're not going to get destroyed by it. Yeah. And then you're switching a bunch of stuff anyway with, you know, with AD and you're sending doubles and sending help. So it really didn't hurt them that much anyway. Um, and the Mavericks, the Mavericks, def this is their best def defense game, like best game they defended so far. Like you said, uh, the Mavericks line up against a team like this pretty, pretty well. Yeah, it's, they're the opposite of the the Kings, where the Kings have one super quick guard that can get in the paint and can move everybody around, and they have one big that can pass out of anything, and they have a big that can like score in the post anywhere. Yeah, and like the Mavericks don't have any guys to throw at either of those guys, but they have guys to throw at LeBron and Grant Williams, who immediately got a foul <laughs> eight eight seconds into the game. Do you like the poke the bear moment from from Grant Williams early? Um, yeah, sure, why not? I mean, I I just I feel like that can always go one of two ways, and I just think that. I don't know. I guess, like, do we really think LeBron's getting up for that in November? I mean, LeBron's already going to be up. Like, I don't know. That that one, to me, I just don't feel like that's, like, a risky poke to bear. But I like it, though. And I don't even know what LeBron was bad at. That looked like a just a normal He just didn't move. Foul. Like, he just, he just didn't move. Yeah, that just looked like a pretty normal foul to me. But whatever. The play hadn't even, like, started really yet either. Yeah, but like, point. 10 seconds but into the game. Uh, but the Mavs looked locked in defensively for yeah. the most part until that fourth quarter. They really looked locked in. It felt like they that maybe Kid did get to them and felt like he was like, all right, we, we've got to be on this. It felt like they were communicating. I saw Tim Hardaway, Kyrie, like a lot of guys communicating with each other on defense. Yeah, I mean, that's been a big problem for them. You could just tell when you rewatch games or just watch the defense closely. Guys are late on switches. Guys don't switch. Guys are standing in the same spot. So, uh, yeah, they were much better tonight. I mean, that was the most locked in they've been defensively. Yeah. I don't like – all season easily. And then going back to last season, probably months, like months into last season as well. Like they were just flying around defensively. And even in the fourth quarter, you know, uh, a, lo a lot of the Lakers scoring, it felt like was off of terrible Mavs offense. Like the Lakers just got out and ran and there were some tough shots there by like Austin Reeves and stuff. So you got to give some props to him, but uh, yeah, great night defensively. So that, that is a, that is a positive legitimately. You'll take that. You'll take yeah. that positive and, and you'll run with it because you just need to see them start building, right? Like, a lot of the beginning of the season is okay. Can they build good habits? Can they build? Can they prove to themselves they're a winning team? Because at a certain point, at the beginning of the season, if you don't prove to yourself you're a winning team, then like I don't, then you don't believe it. At a certain point, like I'm like the Memphis Grizzlies are kind of in that point right now. We're like, all right, you're three and eleven. Do you even believe you can win games this season? And then yeah. where does your season end up after this? Um, and so at least they're they're building good habits, and you've got to show that you at least have some ceiling as a defensive team. That you're like, all right, we can. We can raise our floor a little bit defending, and then we can have some really, really good moments where we can defend really well. Now, Lakers on a second night of a back-to-back, -back, but that first half still, you, you get your you get the other team's best stuff until late in the third quarter, then the legs kind of get tired. Yeah, exactly. No, I think there's a lot to take away defensively here. And then, like you said, I mean, what hidden five now? And, you know, this would have been just an excruciating loss. So you get this win, you're 10-5. and five. You know, you've, I, don't, I don't buy into that you haven't beat good teams narrative too much. The Magic are a very good team. The Lakers good, are yeah. a good team. And you play them at home. That's a tough place to play. They were 7-2 and two at home going into this game. So, yeah, it just feels good. You could look at the, you could look at it and say, all right, we, we belong. We're winning games. We're winning games we probably lose last year. So, we're a different team. Even though it just, you, like, the fourth quarter happens, you're like, oh, my God, this is the same exact team from last year. Coming up, Derek Lively, we've got an update on him, and we want to talk about Josh Green and some more stuff about the Mavs coming up.
All right, slightly got an update from Mark Stein one minute ago as I'm recording this. Oh, God. Derek Lively is walking under his own power near the Mavericks locker room and insists, quote, I'm fine. Oh, God. Thank God. <laughs> Yeesh, that was horrifying. You could hear in his voice. You could hear in Slightly's voice, like the, the journey I just took him through. With yeah, that I didn't know where that was going to I had no idea where that was going to go. <laughs> uh, Derek Lively, with about seven minutes left in the third quarter, hangs on the rim and then like lets go of the rim like on accident and then falls and it looks like he fell on his back but then all of a sudden his like left leg was did something weird underneath it Anthony Davis kind of was under him and so that's why he wanted to hold on to the rim but then did it and so he stays on the ground for the whole possession they come back he's still like holding his back he's like face down on the on the ground you can tell he's like really in pain and then the Mavericks all come around him trainers come out and stop play all that and then the Mavericks help him off, and he's like limping off the court, like his, his yeah. le- but no, putting no weight on his left leg. And so you're going, okay, wait. First, I thought this was a back injury, and then now it seems like a leg thing. And then he goes out, and the Mavericks then report that, or Mavs PR then says back contusion, he won't return. And so now, uh, now, now it says according to Mark Stein, it says he's fine. And so we'll see what happened, what what happens with him, but. Back contusion is definitely better than any left leg thing or like any, any lower leg type thing, ankle, all that. It kind of reminds me of the this scene from The Office where Dwight shoots the gun in The Office and Andy like it hurts his ears. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, all right, let's take you to the hospital. And he starts limping. And Daryl's like, why are you limping? Aren't we going for your ears? And he's like, yeah, uh, yeah. And he just walks. <laughs> Threw his walks equilibrium off. <laughs> Yeah. There is balance off. Uh, how are you feeling about Derek Lively now? After well, all that? that's, I mean, that's good news. I, I will say I'm not taking it athlete saying I'm fine. Like that, that could mean anything really there. I feel like they most, most of the time they say that. So, At least he was walking. True. That's a good sign. Yeah. I was, you know? I felt the same way where he was rolling around on his back. I'm thinking, Oh, he, but he fell on his tailbone. Like yeah. if you've ever done that, you know, that that's just yeah. insanely painful. And you know, it's, it's one of those like stinging pains that can, linger for a bit but it will, it will like gradually kind of go away but yeah when he started limping i was like oh god like what is like what is this because he did like fall on his leg first it was like bent and so i, I felt kind of good about that because like okay well at least he like took some weight like took some of the force of the fall there but once he was limping i was horrified because it was a bad limp too it wasn't like he was gingerly walking like he wasn't putting any weight at all on, on his left foot so the fact that he's walking around and says he's fine is great news because that would be horrific for the Mavericks if he missed uh, brutal I, yeah. as soon as he went down you know, Kato and I had the conversation yesterday on the show like who's the Mavericks third best player most important player and I was like as soon as Derek Lively went down to that injury I was like oh it's absolutely Derek Lively like it took one injury scare for me to know that uh, it's him like he's yeah. the third most important player like Props to Tim Hardaway, Grant Williams for doing for doing good stuff this season and being great. But like, if one of you is out, we think that somebody else could step up. I don't know that I trust anyone else to step up and do the things that Lively can do. No, nobody on this current roster can do what Lively does. Like Rashawn Holmes, nice hit a pinch, really good matchup for him. He yeah. played good. Uh, I mean, Dwight Powell's just been really bad this season. God bless Amen. him. But it's just, uh, I mean, hopefully he's back soon. But by soon, I mean Friday, because it's hard to imagine them winning or Saturday. I guess they play Saturday. It's hard to imagine them winning uh, too many games if Lively's out for extended period of time. And he might be That's... the second most important player. Honestly. Make the I mean, the, the defense is so bad. Like it's it's obviously Luca's number one because he's the hub of the offense and everything. Kyrie, obviously incredibly important. But man, it feels like you can maybe replace Kyrie scoring like on a nightly basis. No, I, I, hold on. I don't. This is gonna sound crazy. But I, I'm. I'm. They're all three very important. I love all three of them. But Lively is just so important for the defense, and the defense is already bad. The defense goes from bad to like, oh my god, this is the worst defense maybe in the history of the league. Pick your favorite kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what it is. <laughs> Basically, what I asked you to do. <laughs> yeah, he's the third most important player. Kyrie's still most like second most to me for sure. But yeah, he played under twenty, just under twenty minutes. He had 10 boards in this game. Anytime he fights for a rebound, good things happen. Like, yeah, I, the more I watch the Mavericks and the more I watch footage back and all that, like anytime he fights for a rebound, something good happens. Somebody else gets it or he gets it. Four offensive rebounds in this game. He almost out rebounded Anthony Davis. With, you know, if he would have played the fourth quarter, he probably would have yeah. in this game. The Mavericks got more offensive rebounds than the Lakers did in this one. He was really good in this game. Like he navigated the AD stuff well. He had 
what no fouls no fouls in the, in the time that he played yeah he was he was absolutely tremendous three assists too and uh like you said with the rebounding thing even if you don't grab the rebound your transition defense is bad so that gives your defense a chance to just get back while the other team is scrambling for the rebound mm-hmm. lively's back there your defense is set okay we can try our hardest to defend probably won't defend well but we can try at least now <laughs> Now we, can, now we can try. Before yeah. we weren't going to try. Now we are. <laughs> the last thing I want to talk about is Josh Green. Josh Green's game makes really no sense to me. It was, it was his oh best game of the season, which is fitting for it to be Josh Green's best game of the season and for it to make no sense. Yeah. First half, five of seven from the field, hit two threes, had three rebounds, had an assist, uh, scored 12 points. He was leading the Mavericks in scoring for a while. Like He scored 12 early points where he was aggressive, attacking, taking advantage of, of the defense and all that. And then he played two minutes in the fourth quarter. He played what? Uh, he played seven minutes in the, in the third and didn't really do a whole lot. What did you take about Josh Green's game and why did Jason Kidd pull him? I, I thought this was his best game of the season by far. I mean, pretty low bar so far this season because it's just been a rough start. But yeah, he was really good. Aggressive, hitting threes, hit a, a little one-legged fadeaway over uh, Austin Reeves in the paint. That was nice. That was good to see. I'm wondering, because I'm looking at the minutes here in the second half, I'm wondering because... Luca played all but two minutes in the second yeah. half of the game. Kyrie plays 18. I'm wondering if they just wanted to avoid having Josh Green out there with those two. Like that, that could really be the only thing I can think of, unless you go back and watch and there was like a play or something where Josh Green messed it up and the coaching staff was like, all right, you're done for the game. But I, I can't imagine what that would have been. So I, I don't know. I don't understand why he didn't play in the second half. But yeah, I thought he was good. Kind of weird. He does not care for. Austin Reeves. No, he does not. All. And it motivates him to guard Austin Reeves, to go after Austin Reeves. And I don't think it's a coincidence that when he didn't play in the fourth quarter, Austin Reeves then had yeah. what nine points in the fourth quarter. It was a plus 17 with LeBron. And like they went on that run. Yeah. No, definitely not a coincidence. Right? No. I don't I don't think it is. And so yeah, I, I, it just didn't make any sense for me for Josh Green to be be in, out, playing well, not. It was just a weird, a weird, weird game. From his point of view. What a game. What a just, just I still breath. don't even understand <laughs> what I just watched in the fourth quarter of that game. It was so frustrating. It was so, it was so furious. It was so I mean, what, furious. when it got to that point, I was like, oh my God, they're going to lose. Like the whole time I was like, it's just a game. Well, they were guys. down. Yeah. Whenever the Lakers were up one and then the Mavericks missed, I don't remember who missed it, but the Mavericks missed a shot with like 40 seconds left. And I was like, oh my God, they just lost this game. Like, I can't believe this is this is a bottom five loss in the last six years of this franchise. <laughs> and now it's just a win. <laughs> yeah, now it's just you'll look at the score in uh in April and be like, oh, wasn't oh, that game that. crazy? I remember forgot that about game? that game. We're gonna look back on it like remember that game when uh Dwight Howard held Seth Curry? Oh at, yeah. Like the, <laughs> the final yep. one they didn't call it. Yep. I remember that one vividly. Uh Derek Jones Jr., incredible block in this game. Ooh, that was oh an my gosh. Block. Rui Hachimura had no ch- had no chance. He he thought he could jump with him and just did not. Yeah, I thought he played good too, but he was in foul trouble uh, for a good portion of this game. Um, did Christian Wood get his revenge game that he wanted? I'm just not. The answer is clearly no. I mean, hello, guys. I've been telling you guys about Christian Wood for two years, three years. God bless him. He's doing pretty good this season. Wasn't good tonight, though. But, he's he's playing a role for them, and like yeah. finally he finally he's playing that role for them, which is good. But he's, you know what's funny? Well, uh, okay, you know what's funny is uh he had he had like a pretty nice little pass. I forgot who was cutting, uh, but it was a dunk. It might have been Christie or someone. Someone cutting. Christian Wood hits him a dunk. They pan to Christian Wood's face, and he's kind of like he's kind of mean mugging a little bit going back down the court. This is like his first <laughs> two minutes in the game. And I'm like, Oh God, like I can't, <laughs> I can't do a Christian wood like explosion <laughs> where he's like mean mugging and looking at the bench after every basket. Like I, my mentions, I just can't do it. <laughs> that vengeance would account would just be all over you. Just, yeah, I love the vengeance would account. One of the better ones on Twitter. Hilarious. Like just a hilarious bit to just commit. <laughs> a Christian wood stand account. <laughs> That's been like writing like this is this is it's not just like a Lakers fan who's like, oh, OK, Christian Wood's my guy now. No. Like it, He's been there no. for every stop. started before the Mavericks yes. <laughs> on the Rockets, at least. I don't know if it dates further back than that. Probably does. Back Pelicans. to the Pistons days. Pelicans, <laughs> uh, Bucks, all that. Yeah, yeah he, he finished. He, he uh, played under 15 minutes. 
missed all of his shots, one free throw, five rebounds, that assist that you mentioned. He was a minus 15. Yeah. Awful. I mean, Rashawn Holmes outplayed him. He did. He did. He's he making more money than him, and he outplayed him in this Rashawn game, Holmes so. damn near outplayed AD. Like, I'm just being honest. Honestly, he kind of did. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Davis was kind of a ghost in this game. Yeah, if you're if you're locked on Lakers right now, if you're the Kamenetsky brothers, you're going off on AD in this ten one. Po- ten points. Oh my! I, I against against Rashawn Holmes and against Dwight Powell. I mean, I knew he half, didn't basically. play well, but I did not realize it was that bad. Okay. Ten points, thirteen rebounds, four assists, three turnovers. Yeah, that's just not good enough. Brutal. Only ten shots too. You got you got. I mean, AD is not like the give the ball to him and he's gonna you know and beat it, but yeah, he's got to do more than that in this game, yeah. especially on the second night of a back to back. All right. LeBron will always be the best player on that team. I just, I just think yeah. they, will, they will never change. The torch will never be passed. The idea is know, good, but it's just never happening. Let us know in the comment section. Do you feel better about this win, or do you feel worse about this win, considering how it was? Guys, thanks so much for listening to Locked On Mavs. Peace out. Boom. Boom. <laughs>